Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, good evening, everybody. We'll call this meeting to order the September 15th uh, Community Planning and Development Commission meeting. So we've got uh, five public hearings tonight, all four articles that are going to be on the September town meeting warrant. Um, so why don't we get started with the first one. Uh, public hearing for zoning change, Article 13 of September Town Meeting, proposed language for zoning bylaw section 4.13, special requirements for registered medical marijuana dispensaries. So uh, I'll ask Nick to read the public hearing notice. Clerk can enact a decision to go into law, chapter 48, section 5, adoption or change of zoning ordinances or bylaws. Notice is hereby given that the Reading Community Planning and Development Commission will hold a public hearing on Monday, September 15, 2014 at 7.30 p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room of the Reading Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, to amend the Reading Zoning Bylaw by deleting Section 413, Temporary Moratorium on Medical Marijuana Treatment Centers, Registered Marijuana Dispensaries, in its entirety, and replacing it with a new Section 413, 4.13, special requirements for registered medical marijuana dispensaries. The proposed change would replace the current temporary moratorium on registered marijuana dispensaries, which expires November 10th, 2014, with a bylaw that regulates the use by special permit. The complete text relative to the proposed amendment and more information are available for public inspection between 7.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday and until 7 p.m. on Tuesdays in Community Services Department at Reading Town Hall. Thank you. All right, so um, this is how we'll, we'll run it tonight. Um, so first, we have a presentation that staff will be providing on each of the public hearings. Um, so we'll start with obviously medical marijuana. CPDC will deliberate on that. We'll open it up for public input. And then once we've exhausted that, we'll close it up. And then we will uh, vote to endorse it or, or not. So. Uh, Oh yeah, and uh, if you haven't signed in, please uh, sign in. The sign-in sheet's in the back. Thank you, Eric. Where Eric is in the back. Thanks. Um, so please go ahead and sign in there. And Jean, I'll pass it over to you. Sure, thank you. Um, just by way of background, the, um, for those of you who are a little bit new to this, um, Zoning Advisory Committee was established by the Board of Selectmen last summer, and uh, since then have met over 40 times, uh, and this is to, um, lay the groundwork for a comprehensive update of the zoning bylaw. A huge undertaking, in case anyone is wondering how that has gone. Um, we also hired a zoning expert in Ralph Wilmer, who was with us tonight from VHB. And with that technical expertise, um, the committee moved forward with the proposed language. Um, we also have a representative from the town council here tonight and um, they have been part of the process as well. Um, Zoning Advisory Committee has recommended updates uh, in advance of the November town meeting, so what's going to be before town meeting in September if the CPDC uh, is in agreement. Uh, well, it's gonna be before them regardless whether or not they agree, um, but it's going to be a handful of um, zoning articles that really were advanced to get the ball rolling. So that's what we're gonna hear about tonight. Um, the remainder of the zoning update, which is that comprehensive effort, will be presented to town meeting in November. Um, so we're gonna start with the um, section 4.13 that they just read the legal add on and then we'll take the others on as we go. And so Article 13 is for special requirements for registered medical marijuana dispensaries. Um, by way of a little bit more background, Chapter 369 of the Act of 2012, an act for the humanitarian medical use of marijuana uh, was passed as question three on the November 2012 state ballot. In November of 2012, in anticipation of that question, um, town meeting approved an article to prohibit medical marijuana treatment centers slash registered marijuana dispensaries from being cited in all zoning classifications in the town of Reading. That was subsequently disapproved by the state attorney general's office, uh, indicating that a ban would conflict with the act. So then in the spring of 2013, the state developed some regulations governing how it would permit medical marijuana treatment centers um, the town determined that additional research and study was needed to develop zoning 
that would go along with those regulations as well as that would work for Reading. And so at the November 2013 town meeting, the town adopted a temporary moratorium on medical marijuana treatment centers slash registered marijuana dispensaries, and that will expire on November 10th, 2014. Again, the ZAC as part of the comprehensive update has gone through an extensive public process and considered the right, both the regulations, and this is a highly regulated area by the Department of Public Health. Um, there was a public forum held on May 12th, 2014 that allowed for public feedback and input on registered medical marijuana dispensaries, and as well, this has been discussed at numerous ZAC regular meetings, uh, including the one on May 21st and May 28th. The Zoning Advisory Committee held a joint meeting with the Reading Coalition Against Substance Abuse. Eric is with us tonight. Thank you for coming, Eric. Erica. And the Reading Police Chief also with us tonight. Thank you, Chief. And town staff for their input and feedback on the proposed language. So the big question was, where do we put it? And um, these registered medical marijuana dispensaries uh, are somewhat of a new uh, animal and we wanted to consider very carefully where it would work in Reading. And so the conclusion was that um, based on the public input, the participation and the feedback, medical marijuana dispensaries would be recommended in the industrial district by special permit. Um, just to note that, again, going back to the state regulations, there is an allowance for a buffer zone for areas where ch children commonly congregate and the bylaw that's before you is calling for a 500 foot buffer from those areas. And there's a map that shows what that would look like with those 500, exclu 500 foot exclusion zones. And um, we, uh, for those of you who can't quite make the map out, the area we're talking about is like behind RMLD, Walker Court, that area. Again, they're heavily regulated by the State Department of Public Health, and they have to adhere to some pretty particular provisions and requirements under the DPH regulations. Um, allowing them by special permit, this would be from the Community Planning and Development Commission, would give an extra measure of control. The general requirements for all registered medical marijuana dispensaries are based on size of the facility, hours of operation, commercial buildings only, and there's an annual reporting requirement in the draft bylaw. Um, the CPDC may issue a special permit only if the dispensary is designed to minimize any adverse visual or economic impacts on abutters and other parties, and that's per, again, Mass General Law. Uh, the dispensary is fully permitted by all applicable agencies of the Commonwealth of the Massachusetts and is in compliance with the regulations set forth in 105 CMR 70. 725, and the applicant has demonstrated compliance with sections 4.13.5 and 4.13.6, which is the site plan review. That's the vital zoning bylaw. So that is essentially what this bylaw proposes. It's gone uh, through many, many reviews and many iterations, and uh, that's what's before you tonight. Great. Thank you. So. Any comments from the board? No. No? I think we've exhausted <laughs> this one. I mean, I think I, I just want to call out, I don't know how clearly, I mean, I know how it's working, but with calling it the industrial district, that's where we are going to permit these. Okay? Um, so why don't we open it up for public comments? Yes. I'm also the county president of La Casa. Would like to acknowledge um, our members here tonight, um, Chief Cormier, uh, Barbara Lesher, and Erica McNamara. Um, and I'd like to, I have a, a statement that I'd like to read on behalf of La Casa. Um, dear CPDC members, the Reading Coalition Against Substance Abuse cultivates the substance abuse prevention movement by convening youth and adults that live, work, and or go to school in Reading, Massachusetts. Our board of directors includes members from 12 sectors of the community, including youth, parents, business, media, school, youth serving organizations, law enforcement, religious and fraternal organizations, civic 
groups, healthcare organizations, state agencies, and substance abuse organizations. As a community coalition working to prevent youth substance abuse, one of our essential priorities is to reduce teen marijuana use through environmental strategies that decrease access to marijuana and increase knowledge of the short and long-term health risks. Thus, we're concerned with the potential siting of any future marijuana, medical marijuana dispensary. We appreciate the opportunity to weigh in on this issue. I want to thank the town staff, Dean Deliotz and Jess Wilson, for working with us. RICASA was included in the discussion of zoning bylaws regarding special requirements for registered medical marijuana dispensaries in June of 2014 with the Zoning Advisory Committee. RICASA representatives then shared the results of that meeting with our board members. The RICASA board met on August 28, 2014 and voted unanimously in support of the language as outlined in Article 13 with a town meeting warrant scheduled for September 29, 2014. We believe zoning for a future potential medical marijuana dispensary should be limited to the industrial zone and not within 500 feet of places where children ga gather. We feel it is imperative for this article to move forward. We thank you very much for all your hard work and uh, all, especially the collaboration and outreach that you did uh, with the community on this article as well as all of the rest of the articles that you've been working on. So thank you very much on behalf of Lacoste. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. <coughs> Any additional comments? We did receive a few electronic comments. Okay. I don't know if you want to read them or just add <coughs> them into the record. Um, I think so. Do we just want to enter them into the record? I think that's fine. Any other comments? Special town meeting in September. Okay. Second. <coughs> Those in favor? <coughs> right. Move that the CPDC recommend the content of uh, Article 13 for adoption by town meeting at special town meeting in September. Second. All those in favor? So um, good, let's keep moving. Um, on the agenda next, we have um, public hearing for zoning change, Article 9 of September Town Meeting, proposed revisions to the zoning bylaw section 1.0, authority and purpose. And again, I'll ask Nick to read the public hearing. Pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section 5, Adoption or Change of Zoning Ordinances or Bylaw, notice is hereby given that the Reading Community Planning and Development Commission will hold a public hearing on Monday, September 15, 2014 at 7.40 p.m. in the Selectman's Meeting Room of the Reading Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, to amend the Reading Zoning Bylaw by deleting Section 1, Authority and Purpose, in its entirety, and replacing it with new Section 1, Authority and Purpose, that will update the authority and purpose of the bylaw to be consistent with the state statute and to provide a more clarified, comprehensive purpose based on the town town plans and goals. Complete text relative to the proposed amendment and more information are available for public inspection between 7.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday and until 7 p.m. on Tuesday in the Community Services Department at Reading Town Hall. All right, thank you. So Jean, wanna walk us through this? Sure, so this is the um, section <coughs> one of the zoning bylaw authority purpose. Um, so Article 9 deletes the existing Section 1 and inserts a new updated Section 1. The new Section 1, Authority and Purpose, has been updated to be consistent with state statute, Mass General Law 40A, and Chapter 40R. In addition, the purposes in Section 1 have been updated to be more comprehensive and better reflect town goals and land use plans that have been adopted. There's a side-by-side -side comparison um, of how that looks the current purpose and the proposed purpose and that's essentially it the, um, the a lot of the language um, as I say the zoning advisory committee spent a lot of time on uh, 
what that purpose should look like. And um, I think that the new language really reflects more of a Reading version and a more modernized version. Great question. Any comments from the board members? We wrote it. We like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, open it up to public comment. Yes, George. Uh, maybe it's good to know which of the sections to the left are not in the new, new version to the right. So that's where I thought I would ask Tom to address it. Um, are you able to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not in line with some of the new smart growth and things that we have um, been pursuing lately. So I, I think that might actually be the only thing, anything else in there I think is still in there and just rephrased. Yeah, or the or intent is the same. Is changed a little right. bit. So I, I think that's actually the only thing that we did. Mm -hmm. I, I'm remembering from that much of it. Yeah, and no, I would agree <laughs> with that. We, we deleted that. We The rest of them have either been rephrased but the intent is the same, or we added new ones. Is, is there a purpose on the order? Because there are, it's, if they are ordered differently than before, is there any rhyme or reason to it, or? We generally meant them to be a little bit more like the, the public health, safety, welfare seems to be like the primary thing, so we did yeah. right. try and do it a little bit more in priority order, but I wouldn't say that it's, necessarily exactly. yeah. yeah totally not unanimous but yeah that was the intent that was the intent right. we did receive um i'm sorry yeah why don't we go, go i saw tony Tony so Rezzo, 130 john street i'm just concerned with sections e and f on the new proposal it seems that including the tax base and encouraging increased housing products production instead of actually um as in section H originally, in, to encourage housing for persons of all income levels, seems to be too growth oriented, too much. Yes, we want as much building as possible. And I was wondering if it might be struck from uh, the proposal for town meeting. Thank you. Um, I don't know if we want to make a call on town council on sort of the mechanics of how this works at this point the four corners of the article and mm -hmm. sure point. so yes you have to write to, in response to to the comments from the audience by the way sorry I'm Donna Brewer from Mary's in Harrington <laughs> Ray couldn't be with you but he's here in spirit um, and I've been doing municipal you look law way different. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing municipal law for over 17 years so uh, the, the process is that in response to comments if you want to recommend changes to the article you can do so as part of your recommendations to the town meeting but of course the town meeting will have the final say on what the final article looks like Okay. So, yeah, Nick. Yeah, I guess just taking off on what Mr. DeRozzo said, there are two older purposes, F and G, right? To prevent overcrowding of land and to avoid undue concentration of population, which are negative things. And the way we do it now, they're considered positive things, really, because smart growth is higher densities in certain areas, right? We're sort of, we're going to decide where the concentrations are and how they're built up. So. Um, we don't, you know, we, I guess we thought those were bad things. If you do them right, they're good things. And I would also argue that if you look at it individually, I can see Tony's point, but I mean, at the, we try to, try to work these bullets together. So yeah, we would encourage, um, where is it? increased housing, but we would also want to ensure that we're providing, this may be a bad example, but adequate light and air. So hmm. we're not just gonna slam something in there for the sake of accomplishing um, purpose F, only to put at risk purpose J. I think for you, sir, did you have a, a comment? I, I just had a comment in general about purpose sections. They generally set out what you're looking to accomplish but every project has to meet the requirements of the bylaw in the specific sections they arise under. So 
for example, you just can't approve any density just because you want to cram in a whole bunch of new taxpayers. It would have to go under the density of the particular section that they, they're seeking a permit on. Mm -hmm. All right. And yes, ma'am. Um, Elaine Webb, uh, Precinct 1. I attended uh, the financial forum this week, and I do think that um, encouraging growth is a really important thing for our community as long as we're encouraging the growth in highly responsible and structured manner. And it does seem like these purposes at this level build that, um, do build that in. Um, of course, the need of that really is in the um, details of the bylaw, but I think that we have to face the fact that we have to grow somehow in this community and we are limited because of the demographic of the community re related to residential and commercial um, properties and, and tax base. So I support the change. Thank you. Sir? Yes, yeah, Stephen Crook, Precinct 2 Town Meeting Member. I think the key to E is that it encourages an orderly expansion. Hmm. Uh, expansion is likely to occur. It's just that it's orderly expansion instead of just a chaotic or random expansion. So you have to look at the, 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 the section in the whole. Absolutely. Yes, Jean. Yeah, if I could just make a comment. Um, I think what we're trying to get at is managed growth, mm -hmm. and that's what um, that's what zoning can help us to do, and so certainly site plan review. Um, the other point that I wanted to make about um, uh, item F is to encourage increased housing production. Um, there's been some changes in state law, and um, certainly town council and, and our zoning consultant can speak more to this, but we're actually required now to have a housing production plan. So that's a little different than the way we used to do housing plan a decade ago or so. And so thankfully, um, we went through the process of updating the housing production plan, mostly through Jesse's hard work. Um, and this board uh, engaging in a lot of discussion about how to do that hu housing production plan. And, and that was a managed growth document. Um, but we are required to do that. And uh, we've got a certified housing production plan that the state has approved. And uh, so we're doing what we've been told we need to do. Um, so I think that's important to consider in the language change. Thank you, Jean. Any other comments? We did receive um, an email comment from Angela ben uh, Binda. She would come to some of the ZAC meetings. Um, she's concerned with um, Article 1. Um, and her concern is mostly related to, is it going to be obvious to town meeting members when what the proposed changes are? Um, she thinks that it should be printed in the warrant so that it's clear. Um, she has some specific concerns um, related to provision F, G, K, H, E, and A. I could go through them in detail if you want, um, or we can just enter it into the yeah. Yeah. I think the, th the, the basically the essence of her comments are um, similar to what's been said about, you know, being concerned about overdevelopment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would agree with her comment about how we, well, I don't know if it's too late, but perhaps how we presented in the warrant to town meeting to perhaps call out specifically what's been changed, almost to the point that we were making earlier. I don't know if it's too late to make that happen. Yeah, we, we went with the side by side. What we can do is provide a handout at town meeting that I, I think it's a valid thing to point out, and I think it would be a good thing to have what we can have as a handout at town sure. meeting that will supplement what's in the warrant that says these are the specifics of what changed, you know, specifically in the purpose. Absolutely, yeah. Good, any other comments? Move that the CPDC close the public hearing for Article 9 um, on Section 1, Purpose of the Bylaw. Second. All those in favor? So I guess I do have a question. For the comment that was made by Mr. DeRosa, do we have to vote on recommending or not recommending that? No. no? Okay. All you need to vote on is your recommendation to town meeting about the article. Okay. Okay. You want to take a vote or do you have any other comments? 
the no further comment at this point. <laughs> presentation to the town meeting is going to be um, tricky I mean because because it depends on how people hear more on uh, than it does on, on how you say mm -hmm. uh, so it will be interesting to see what uh, what people pick up the orderly growth is the key the growth is going to happen we know it will um, and we need to manage you know what grows and where which is what the the intent of the um, zoning yeah. and this is only the, the growth that you can control there's a whole bunch of things you have no control of. right yeah. I think this feedback is helpful for how we present yeah. or how we develop our presentation. What was the term you used? Manage growth? Manage yeah. development? Yeah. yeah. So that's a good term we should use. Good. I mean, you could delete all of these purposes and the content of the zoning still wouldn't change. Right. So. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. We can debate this at <laughs> town meeting. <laughs> oh. Move that the CPDC recommend the content of Article 9 uh, for the special town meeting September 29th. Second. All those in favor? Good. Two down. Can we start the next one? Oh, yeah. All right. Third, uh, public hearing for zoning change, Article 10 of September Town Meeting, proposed revisions to zoning bylaws, Section 3, establishment of districts. Pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 5, adoption or change of zoning ordinances or bylaw. Notice is hereby given that the Reading Community Planning and Development Commission will hold a public hearing on Monday, September 15, 2014, at 7.50 p.m. in the Selectman's Meeting Room of the Reading Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, to amend the Reading Zoning Bylaws by deleting Section 3, Establishment of Districts, in its entirety, replacing it with a new Section 3, Establishment of Districts. Proposed changes include updating the list of districts and reducing the number of overlay districts, correcting zoning map references to the federal insurance rate maps, and clarifying district boundaries, including lots in two districts. New language also proposes to delete intent of districts, so it is referenced once only in respective sections. Complete text relative to the proposed amendment and more information are available for public inspection between 7.30 a.m. 5.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday until 7 p.m. on Tuesdays in the Community Services Department of Reading Town Hall. Thank you. Jean, you want to walk us through this one? Sure. Section 3, Establishment of Districts, is the subject of Article 10. And the proposed revisions um, include uh, some deletion and some clarification. Uh, there are two overlay districts in the list of districts that uh, are being recommended to be deleted. That's the language pertaining to the floodplain district and the language pertaining to the wetlands protection district as well as the municipal reuse district. Um, we're clarifying and reorganizing regulations pertaining to lot boundaries, uh, lots in two districts in particular. That gets clarified and um, uh, tweaked a bit. Um, we also made a correction to the language on the referencing the federal insurance rate maps or the firm maps. Um, and we're properly now identifying them as an exhibit to the zoning map. That's Great. basically section three. Thank you. Any comments from the board? Well, I'm a little bit confused. Um, where it says deletion of the municipal reuse district, uh, yet the text for article 10 includes it. Yeah, we are deleting. Yeah, we yep, are deleting. I'm sorry, that. So, it is. well, there's there was actually a odd purpose of the municipal reuse 
stuck in there, yep. as well as a purpose to the floodplain district, if you recall, right. way back when we looked at this, it felt very out of place that these were in this section, so we moved them out. And it's a little confusing here because some things are listed in the body, but then they're also listed again by reference in the map, so that, that made it a little bit confusing. I'm so now I'm completely <laughs> confused. So is municipal reuse being deleted? It's a little bit of language in the municipal mm -hmm. reuse. Right. We're maintaining the district. The district stays. But the, there was a actually like a purpose statement in section three related to uh. municipal reuse that was very oddly placed in section three. It should not have really been there. So we're just moving it out. Oh, so it's, so it's basically deletion of certain language. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, I think, right, because that was my confusion. You say deletion of two overlay districts, but then you go on to explain three districts in entire uh, lumped all together. Right. So uh, there's a difference mm -hmm. between right. deletion of language and deletion of right. language in the municipal reuse right. district that's two different things so, so would it be like the two deletion of language according to floodplain and the wetlands should be like sort of indented they're under the overlay districts is that how this is being explained and then you have deletion of certain language pertaining certain to language the yeah they when we say deletion of language it should be say certain in language Oh, are those not the two overlay? The, o the, the overlay districts are not listed there? The overlay districts that we're deleting are really by by reference in the map. I'm going to make this more confusing than it needs to be. Well, why don't we just tell them which two districts underneath that, like uh, Ms. Bell, uh, what I was saying, indent underneath the deletion of two overlay districts and just parentheses which two are going away. RC? Yeah, I think, so there are two districts, and those are the next two articles. I I would say that at town meeting, perhaps we can take these out of order and talk about the deletion of the districts first. And then we can say when we're talking about the establishment of the districts, we're cleaning up so that it aligns, and then we've cleaned up language, because it, it will be easier to understand, I yeah. think, town meeting. Ralph? And, and I think the other thing to note is that, again, just for clarification and update, um, in this article, in the list of overlays, you specifically added the um, two smart growth districts where they weren't oh, they weren't there previously. Uh, current version. So we were deleting two and adding two. Yep. Everyone clear? Everyone, any other questions on that? <laughs> well, we haven't technically opened it up for public comment, but that's fine. Any other comments <laughs> here? No, other than the fact we have to fix the slide. <laughs> any comments from the public? Move that the, the CPDC close the public hearing for Article 10 of the uh, September 29th Special Town Meeting. Second. Second. All those in favor? Move that the CPDC recommend the content of Article 10 um, for adoption by town meeting. Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. On a roll. <laughs> All right. Number four. Uh, public hearing for zoning change, Article 11 of September Town Meeting, proposed deletion of zoning bylaw, Section 4.5, Wetlands Protection District. Nick? Pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 5, Adoption or Change of Zoning Ordinances or Bylaw. Notice is hereby given that the Reading Community Planning and Development Commission will hold a public hearing on Monday, September 15, 2014, at 8 p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room of the Reading Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street. 
to amend the Reading Zoning Bylaw by deleting Section 4.5, Wetlands Protection District, in its entirety. Complete text relative to proposed amendment and more information are available for public inspection between 7.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 7 p.m. on Tuesdays in the Community Services Department at Reading Town Hall. Thank you. Jean, you want to walk us through this? Sure. Um, Section 4.5 is the Wetlands Protection District, and this was established to help protect wetland areas in the town of Reading. The Wetlands Protection District regulations was reviewed pretty extensively, um, including review by Zoning Advisory Committee, CPDC, and the Conservation Commission. And the consensus was that this was really a defunct piece of uh, zoning. Uh, superseded by the State Wetlands Protection Act and by Reading's local wetland protection bylaw, and that's included in Section 7.1 of the general bylaw. So, what's being recommended here is to delete Section 4.5, Wetlands Protection District, of the zoning bylaw. Essentially, uh, it's really covered by the State Wetlands Protection Act and the local bylaw and can be removed. And we did get a letter from the Conservation Commission supporting that in writing, and a vote was taken. Great, thank you. Any comments from the board? Did, did the previous section um, add a step for somebody developing property for development? Was there an extra step that they had to go through to come before us or, or the town? Under this? Well, section, the old section 4.5, did it add a step that's now being removed and just covered by it? I don't think it was ever really followed in any way. I think everything went to the Conservation Commission, and with, with two sets of regulations, the State Wetlands Protection Act and the mm -hmm. local bylaw, I think the, that's how we always handled conservation issues. Okay. Any other comments? Any comments from the public? Move that CBDC close the public hearing for um, Article 11 of the <coughs> town meeting warrant. Second. All those in favor? Move that the CBDC recommend the content of Article 11 to a town meeting at uh, September 29th special town meeting. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. And simplify, clarify, modernize. <laughs> I think they're closing. <laughs> All right, the last public hearing for the evening um, public hearing for zoning change, Article 12 of September Town Meeting. Proposed deletion of zoning bylaw section 4.6 mixed use overlay district. It says it's 810. What time do you have? Uh, 809. 11. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have one minute. <coughs> you have 811? Yes. That's not one of those. We have 809. 809. I'll debate this for a couple yeah. more seconds. <laughs> okay. I have 810. I have 810. Good. Good. I just don't want somebody to step up late on the same day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank right. you for <laughs> catching that. Pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 5, Adoption or Change of Zoning Ordinances or Bylaw, notice is hereby given that the Reading Community Planning and Development Commission will hold a public hearing on Monday, September 15, 2014, at 8 10 p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room of Reading Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street. To amend the Reading Zoning Bylaw by deleting Section 4.6, Mixed Use Overlay District, in its entirety. Complete text relative to the proposed amendment and more information are available for public inspection between 7.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday and until 7 p.m. on Tuesdays in the Community Services Department at Reading Town Hall. Thank you. That's one, Jean. Okay, thank you. This is Section 4.6, the Mixed Use Overlay District. Um, this was adopted in 2005, initially with the goal of encouraging mixed use in the downtown. Um, Unfortunately, the regulations presented some challenges, um, and to date, no projects have been constructed under this mixed-use overlay district. 
Um, in 2009, the town adopted the Downtown Smart Growth District under Mass General Law Chapter 40R. And the Downtown Smart Growth District is an effective tool for mixed use development and also contains design guidelines. That's an added measure of managed growth. Article 12 proposes to delete the mixed use overlay district as the Downtown Smart Growth District contains modern and current planning and land use principles for mixed use zoning. And we've actually seen some projects get built under this. Thank you. Any comments from the board? Well, this, this is in, in essence an opportunity because we've, we have discussed, I believe, the removing the mixed use uh, several times. And, and most of the time it's been not worth the, not worth the trouble to get rid of it. Uh, and nobody has, has ever even considered using it. So this is the, the in the context of the comprehensive update, this is an, an opportunity to clean up. Absolutely. Any other comments? Any comments from the public? George? Um, just a note here that for existing buildings and existing uses, I believe we have other provisions to the use regulations for mixing of uses under certain conditions, even though they may not fall under the smart growth, we may basically maintain their existing status. We, came, we did some cleaning up for allowing some conditional mixing of uses mm -hmm. um, for, its, you know, and for existing uses. And that was something that uh, this uh, mixed overlay district when it was, set, it was put together on a Saturday morning or before the high peak of the booming in the building, we thought we were doing the right thing at that time. Obviously, I was trying to address something bigger, but also something smaller to allow some mix. I think by addressing that smaller piece, which we will later find in November, I guess, whenever we discuss the bigger uses, I think I can clearly say that we have covered all the bases already. This has no use. Right. Thank you. Any other comments? Excellent. Okay. Move that the CPDC close the public hearing for Article 12 of the September town meeting. Second. All those in favor? Move that the CPDC recommends the content of Article 12 to town meeting for uh, enactment at the special town meeting in September. Second. All those in favor? All right. I will entertain a motion for the ZAC. I will that the close the ZAC meeting on September 15th. Thank you. So Second. All those in favor? Thank you. All right. We're getting there. Thanks, everybody. We need a break. We want to keep going. Only quarter past eight. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> we've covered a lot of terrain in the last 45 minutes. So, all right, let's keep going. So next up on the agenda, uh, review the revised draft zoning changes uh, for the site plan review. Where is that in the packet? Oh, there it is. Cool. So, yeah, it printed strange in your meal packets, your mail packets, but um, the dust packet should be better. Yes. So this has all the changes from our last Exact meeting that we worked through. This is page 67. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the table's been filled in. Yep. It may have been that I meeting. Mean, I don't remember. But. Okay. And 
you had made some, some suggestions and we made those changes um, based on that. So it was September 3rd that we last took a look at it as the ZAC. And you have both a um, track change view in your packet and then a final view on page 75 oh, okay. of your desk packet. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we're not changing any of our current regulations, correct? You know, what qualifies for minor, what qualifies for major. Right. We're just making it clear. Clearer. We added a table. We've removed a lot of the administrative stuff into a handout that we're going to have available. Yeah, so that was a, a big key change from the ZAC was that they wanted to, and actually as part of the CPDC, if you recall, we had like a long version that listed quite a few plan requirements. Mm -hmm. So we pulled that out. So that's not here. It references basically some CPDC rules or administrative regulations, which we'll need to, you know, think about in advance of this getting final approval from the AG's office. Um, but it really kind of makes it more streamlined in the actual bylaw by doing that. And we're hoping that the table makes it very easy for an applicant to, to look at and say which which version of site plan do I qualify for um, based upon the initial threshold that's listed at in one two one. Um okay. I'm a bit when did the three family mentioned appear in 1.2.1? I noticed the same I'm sorry, thing. I wanted what? In in one two one, yep. we have single family, two family, and three family structures are exempt from site plan. We've nowhere in Reading have we included three families in anything in any special. I'm going to say exemption from any regulation. It's always really been single family, two family, and then we have a third category, which is multifamily, which may or may not require different things, but we've never used a three family de designation for anything. I mean, maybe the current language is better to use. Right now, the current language um, in our bylaw. Um, it just says single family and two family and accessory structures there too. It says any exterior construction alteration expansion of more than 500 square feet of an institutional, commercial, industrial, or multifamily structure with four or more dwelling units is subject to site plan review. So we qualify it with the four or more units. So we could just say Multi-family, yeah. it could be single family or multi-family with four or more dwelling units. Except our definition for multi-family housing in the new draft calls um, multi-family housing as uh, a building or portion thereof designed for occupancy by three or more families. Right. It's not four or more. <coughs> I thought that's what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Three family was never used. It was always one and two family. Yeah, well, there was in the the current bylaw. There's there's basically a a, a hole. It's a yeah. The, I'm trying to clean we it have up. One family and two family, and then we have multifamily, which four. is defined to be four or more. Uh, four. Did you just say three, three or more? Three. No, this is the new the, the definition. Oh. We're, we're, but the current. We're revising the definition to. Okay. To keep, plug the hole, right? So we don't need so this here. So we we should strike three family from from this oh, and replace it with multi multi family. No, no multi no, family is covered. It's only single and, and two family that are exempt. That are exempt. Yeah. Okay, got it. We got that, Jesse. We're good on. You look like you're thinking. I'm just. I am thinking. So we're going to delete. We're going to just go single family and two family structures are exempt. So right. if we have a, a three unit structure that's proposed. That would be subject to and that would be considered a multi-family. Multi 
under the new under the new definition new definition three or more families living independently in which they may or may not share common entrances or other spaces yeah I mean this and, and was there any trick between the number four and the current bylaw um, yeah currently we say single and two and then it goes multifamily which is four multifamily units of four or more yeah. units so there wasn't it was unclear what three was supposed to be right. it was basically that there was no provision in the in the existing bylaw for regulating the, you know specifically a three family okay so single family and two family structures are exempt yep. yeah and this the single you know the, the one too many is uh, matches with the revised table of uses it's either single family or two family or multi so the idea is that we're hoping it makes sense that folks will go to 1.2.1, say, see whether or not they trigger site plan review, then you determine which level right. of site plan review using the chart, and then it goes on to the provisions related to both minor and major. Mm -hmm. so. Which is how we do it in the office day to day. That's how it works. at page 76, the table of applicability. Um, the, row, the row which says parking lot expansion says 15 square feet. I don't think that's what it means. Oh, more than 15 spaces. Question, or shall we talk about um, using parking as the um, determinate the amount of parking is a determination of what process they go through? Because I could see a change in use that has uh, that doesn't change parking, but has a, a big a lot of other impacts other than parking. Um, it just doesn't happen to require a lot of people to park, but it has some other sort of um, externality that people might find, you know, mm -hmm. uh, obnoxious. So um, I thought that in the sort of in the previous version we had an sort of a, some um, sort of I'm going to say out where if it was in the if it was in the um, that there is always the default that to go up the ladder up to site plan review if it was felt that it would cause greater impacts. So, but this is review is tied to parking. You're saying qualitative versus quantitative? Uh, t typically. Mm -hmm. Probably eighty-five percent of the time, this is this is will fit the right developments would fit in the in the right um, review, but I don't think all the time, especially mm -hmm. downtown. So it they don't require any parking, right? Well, I think we kind of have mm -hmm. that. So, section one three one 
It says the town planner or CPDC may grant administrative approval if it will not result in any adverse impacts as described in 1.6. If we believe that there's a potential for impact, then that I believe would. It doesn't say that in here though. That's I mean, that's what, I guess right now. Maybe we can modify that language. Right, right now, if you're downtown and you're, um, doesn't require any parking or maybe this doesn't fit in that because that parking is an exemption from the requirement it still requires the parking but it's exempt it's sort of a legal um, circle there but mm -hmm. I mean basically you're saying 90% of the development in town would not have to go through site plan review because none of them require parking with a big over 500 square feet just change the use I'm sorry yeah just change the use well <clears throat> if we look at the, the it used to be a change of use within an institutional commercial industrial or multifamily structure that exceeds the thresholds in sections 1 2 a or B above um, and I believe that the it was referring to the interior or alteration um, so under 1.2.1 e there isn't a reference to a change of use under applicability, but then I think the table probably is meant to, but maybe that E could be modified. Yeah, I think that's where we need to, to put some more. Change of use basically that um, has impacts basically what we're trying to say. What was that language you just read, David? That was from the old one. Um, if we put that back in E, does that get us to where we need to be? Put that back as E, what you Yeah. That's correct. What was that name? Reference. Uh, no, I'm just following what Jean's saying. She You'll expand a change of use to include all of this language with the correct um, section reference, I guess. Does it, does it need that section reference? I'm not sure that it needs the, the reference per se. Um, I think you need that because I, I can see working this table now. I would just do something that required 14 spaces, knowing that there'd still be the same traffic and I'd probably still get the same patrons. And I would have to do site plan review. Well, see, the th yeah, see, the difference was if you had a change in use, you were required to have site plan review, but we had the uh, the, we had the um, the administrative rules that said that if there was a you know if in town planner's opinion there was um, uh, not going to be any impacts yeah. then you could approve it administratively so but from their perspective I mean from a developer's perspective they they were required to go through site plan review with a change of use. And it was up to you to say, mm, "This, there's, no, there's no difference here. There's no change." Yeah, it got tricky with like Dr. Ravens when they demolished the house. Yeah. And they created a parking lot. We thought that that should have gone through site plan review. And um, they basically said, "We're not doing it." Till they came, they came, they came subsequently, like a year or two later. Oh, I see. Okay. 
with their plan to expand the building and then actually create a, a formal parking lot. But they were using it for parking. So it went from being a house to being a use, a parking use. I don't think there really ultimately was any big impacts associated with it, but it never went through this board. Um, it's murky. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think that would happen with anything where you, when you have that condition, when you're getting rid of something and you're not, you're right, they were never going to ask for a building permit, right? No. They just, they just used it for it. parking. Yeah. yeah. So I think it, I think that could happen no matter what we yeah. put and in Yeah, and we here. didn't make a big issue yeah. out of it. It's like, fine, whatever. Yeah. So do we need to beef up letter, a, letter E? Yeah, and I think we need to um, simplify the table. Okay. I mean, the, to, because to a certain extent, the... Uh, the table is inconsistent. It says parking lot expansion greater than 15 spaces, but the phrase leading up to it says expansion of a parking lot that creates 15 or more new spaces. Mm. I think you might be saying change 15 to 14 for these, correct? No, what I was saying is I can work this. If somebody comes to me, I'll just put three chairs to a table in my restaurant have, and have oh, the number work for 14 parking spaces and have chairs available on the side. You guys going to enforce that? You can't even enforce the sign regulation. <laughs> you know, you're not going to be able to enforce this. It'll be the same impact, same number of traffic, you know, same cars, and they don't go through site plan review. The threshold is weird. It, it, I think, John, you were saying tying it to parking is odd the number of spaces. I mean, 15 parking spaces is, is 2,500 square feet just for the parking, not even the circulation. Right. <coughs> All right, well, let's, we need to make these changes now. Right. So what do we propose for letter E? Is it that we take some language from the previous bylaw, or I should say the current bylaw. The change of use within an institutional, commercial, industrial, or multifamily structure. And you want to put that in the table? No, I think you're up right in, letter in letter E. In e. Well, when does the table apply? So mm -hmm. you have these like initial thresholds. Mm -hmm. That's what we're calling A through E. If you trigger any of those, then you then you go to the table and you you ask yourself which which form of site plan review am I am I looking at, and that's the goal of the table. Well, I like the flexibility of having minor site plan review by staff, with the ability to kick that up to full site plan review if somebody comes in with something that's well beyond that scope. Should we just modify then sec provision one point three point one to sort of s say that? A little bit more clearly, or are you concerned that the table is going to get misconstrued and get us in us in a corner? Uh, like I said, I think you can work it so that you don't so that you're avoiding it when you need to. But I also don't want to overburden someone who's really doing a change of use that that isn't that big of a right. deal. Let's say downtown, it's the same number of parking spaces, right. same general density. You know, the town planner can look at that. And, and uh, review it, make it go faster. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought the way that it was structured before, that was the beauty of it, was that, um, w was that the default was a site plan review, and you sort of um, were, were allowed <coughs> to move faster if, or go sort of simpler if your project allowed it instead of this is, is sort of I'm going to use the term by right um, yeah, of avoiding site plan review and I think there can be some yeah so maybe 1.3.1 Jesse goes the other way right they grant administrative approval for a minor site plan review I guess that's what you're saying there you are saying that 
Do we want to remove the table? No. Um, if you say someone has to come in for site plan review, you cannot then say that it can be a minor site plan review, can you? I mean, does the table only work in one direction? If you say they, ha they have to do minor site plan, you can kick it up. If you say they have to do a full site plan, can you kick it down? What are we obligated to do with that table? I have a couple of thoughts on what you could do if you wanted to first simplify the table. I would strike the third, the fourth column there, the one that says minor safe plan review staff. Just call it minor safe plan review and not specify CPDC or staff. And then you can eliminate the last three rows by saying subdivision of space or change of use requiring 15 or more parking spaces. That would be site plan review. Then subdivision of space or change of use requiring less than 15 parking spaces. That would be minor site plan review. And then you would say for 1.3.1, CPDC may adopt regulations under which it will authorize the town planner to grant administrative approval for a minor site plan review. That is, pull the, um, pull the uh, decision making as to where, who decides it out of the bylaw and put it into a regulation. The only reason to do that is because bylaws are a lot harder to revise. You put a general grant of authority to you guys as the commission to give to the town planner some authority under rules that you want to control, mm -hmm. then you can amend those regulations a bit more easily if you find something isn't working in that grant of authority. This is something to consider. Which is not far from where we had it to begin with, correct? Right now we do have administrative rules and regs for CPTC. Right. For the minor site plan review. Where the default is a minor site plan and then we've provided administrative yep. rules. I think that's been working. Yeah, we haven't had any problems. If it's easier for you guys, I could rework the table and send it to you tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. I have to be in Stockbridge. But I can send it to you on uh, the next day. And you can take a look. But I know you want to decide something tonight. We so. to yeah, we're kind of in a yeah. time crunch. Can we make the changes right here, right now? We could. Yeah, we. So delete that fourth column. Is everyone comfortable with what they heard? That we want to do that? Yeah, and yeah, I'd like to see the wording for mm -hmm. the yeah, uh, that's, that's other pieces. Better. You can just cut it because we added it, so you don't have to reject your delete. You just cut it. No delete column. Oh, oh yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Table layout. Mm, okay. That was in there. Mm, okay. And then get rid of the CPDC, right? Mm -hmm. Division of space or change of use put right in there. So we do the same for the one right below it. Yeah, and the current mm -hmm. rules and regs mm -hmm. it states we have the no, go ahead. And then you can do I was just gonna say it just rows. says that um minor site plan review applicants may bypass the CPDC when section 433 can be met, further when there is no impact as determined by the town planner in accordance with 4336, hours of operation, intensity, parking requirements, traffic, circulation, drive through, substantial change in use, pedestrian safety, or any other issues that meets the spirit of the zoning bylaw under this section. Just to what you already have. 
Is that what we're thinking? Is that what you're thinking, John? Those are listed here. I have them yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then we also are showing that um, deletion of the section where CBDC shall promulgate um, rules and regs to meet the purposes and intent, bylaw, blah blah blah. So um, that was in there before. I think we still have it in. It's just in a different spot. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, I think it does. So, it looks yeah. like it's a different color here. Yeah, it's in one one two, right? Yeah, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, one one yes. two has that. It's right up front. Yeah. We took care. Of, took care of that. So did we? So for that one three one. Mm -hmm. One three one. We wanted to change, right? Did we finish up in that table? A couple of rows need to be yeah, next to list in them, right? Yeah. So they all need to go in minor site plan review. Interior. <clears throat> and do we want to add interior only greater than or two thousand square feet or more? Well, they, that's kind of yeah, that needs to up top, interior only, which is 2,000, in, in provision A. Yeah. yeah so that, kicks you, that kicks you into it. Do we need to say it again in the table? Once you're over the threshold, then you're in the table. I mean, we do say it for the second one. Greater than 2,000 square feet? Yeah. Or yeah. square, square feet of grade. Needs to be greater than or equal to the way we have it right now. It's two thousand square feet or more. I was just wondering whether or not you wanted to try and clean up the terminology and the symbology to make it consistent. In some places you say less than, in some places you say more than or no more than, and in some places you use the greater than simple. Might be easy. <coughs> Excuse me, easier if you just. Use greater than or less than in words. In words. Yeah, except that it's 2,000 square feet or more is the way the word is. Greater than or equal to. to yeah, I'm just saying whatever. Yeah, sure. Just make it consistent. Suggesting changes to one that three one two. One three one. Yeah. One three yes. one. One three dot one. Yes. Yes. One dot three dot one. Also. Yes. Can I say and uh, or ask the question? Um, <clears throat> uh, in the pa in the way that we have it set up now, 
is that you're the arbiter of, and I think I said this before, but I just want to make sure that you're comfortable with it, that you're the, you're the arbiter of whether you think something has significant impact. Let's say storefront, um, uh, uh, um, something on the front of the glass, yep. putting up coffee things in yep. front of the window. No, that's an impact. Da -da -da. I, don't, I don't feel comfortable reviewing this. I want to go to the board. The way that it is here, you're, I think what's going to happen is you're going to, you, uh, your office is going to then be in battles with, with proponents um, of no, um, that's, um, how do we have it worded? Well, that's a big yeah. impact. No, it's not a big impact. Yeah. And I think that the whole way that it was before was, look, I, I don't feel comfortable it's going to the board yeah and here because it's in the way that it's structured here it's really it's black and white it's your opinion I mean it's you're the you're the controller um, and I don't didn't know if that's really the position that we wanted it or you wanted it um, I, what you know, makes you uh, think yeah where are you getting that Projects subject to a minor site plan review, according to Section 1.2, may be eligible for administrative approval by the town planner and may bypass CBDC review when there is no impact as determined by the town planner. So Where I'm going to try. Uh, I'm looking. Okay, top of page, page 77. 77. Yeah. Top of page 77. So I'm going to try my darndest to say, oh, come on, Gene, you know. There's no impact. There's no impact. There's no impact. You, we don't. We don't need to go through all that expense. And Is this in there already? I, I just. What do you? Um, I, I, I just think you're set. I think it's setting your office up for. Well, that's kind of what we use now. Yeah. And well, nobody's ever given us any. You don't hard. think they're getting that now? Nobody. Well, yeah, yeah. but. Nobody's really given us too much. If we say it's minor site, you got to go to the board. You got to go to the board, and they may be disappointed, but we've never had any major pushback. I, I mean, have, have you? No. You're getting um, it on Dover. The Dover people are probably the biggest pains. What section that. are we on? I'm still confused. Um, sorry. So Page we're two. talking about 1.31 okay. as well as this provision that's down okay. here. Um, I mean, that's kind of how it's written today. Uh, it's written as if there's no impact determined. And if we can't make a positive determination that there's absolutely no impact, then we, we tell them we can't, as us too, we can't make that determination. It has to go to the board. That's what we, that's what we indicate to applicants, and we've never gotten pushback. Yeah, John, the way we just fixed up the table, we took away the third column that had yeah. staff and CPDC yeah. one. This just says if it has to go to minor site plan review, they could say it's a CPDC minor site plan review. I mean, if you guys are comfortable, I mean, I, I just think it's, it may push more decisions your direction or more pressure your direction to make a decision. But if you don't think... I mean, it's, you guys haven't made a bad decision yet, so. Well, I think part of, part of your concern, if you look at that paragraph on page 77, the third paragraph, um, if you removed the first occurrence of by the town planner, to say may be eligible for administrative approval and may bypass CP DC review. So just scratch minor site plan review by town planner and may be eligible for administrative approval and may bypass CP DC review, right? Right.
I mean, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a minor change, but I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. But then you've still got later on when there is no impact as determined by the town plan. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't change the actual process. Right. But it, um, I think it works. It's less uh, inflammatory, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you want to remove it then also in the um, subdivision, in the subsection title? Yes. Well, since this is all under the minor site plan yeah, review heading, way. can we just strike it all? Yeah, well, strike the, the strike yeah. the. Yeah, remove the yeah. whole heading. Don't have any heading at all. Yeah. Right, right. Just the main heading for that section covers it all. One thing, just going back to you know the changes to the table, E still says change of use, but now the table has nothing because you eliminated those last three rows. I think we added something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, or we're change we're, of use. Oh, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Collapse it up into the earlier ones. And then what were the recommended changes for one three dot one? Well, I was thinking that you could say something like, um, let's see how we word it. The CPDC, uh, comma, through regulation, comma, may authorize the town planner. to grant, and then go on for the rest. Mm. No, well, leave, is it leave the word may. Mm. Yep. Yeah. May authorize the town planner to grant. Yep. Does this eliminate This eliminates reference to really CPDC minor site plan review, though. Well, the CPDC can always keep it. Just update the regulations. Exactly. Well, we have this whole. Don't we have this whole section in one one two a about the ability to create? Um, maybe the terminology isn't right, but mm -hmm. may adopt and promulgate reasonable guidelines, regulations, and standards to use, use in administrative site plan review. I thought that's the terminology, 112A. Mm -hmm. I thought right. that was the terminology that was used so that we could create mm -hmm. these administrative rules. Yep. So yes. are we duplicating that yeah. same no. thing here? Is mm -hmm. that what you would? Not you know? entirely. I mean, you, you want to, any regulations that you adopt have to be consistent with the bylaw, so you want to make it clear in the bylaw that you have the right to adopt that regulation. So that's why putting it in here, you're right, maybe you could put it in, sneak it in by inference in the other one, but here it's going to be clear that the CPDC has the right to to give that that delegation of authority, authority. authority. Yeah. that often, sometimes yeah. it requires a bylaw to sure. permit that. And, and also, John, be careful not to confuse administration of with administrative. Mm -hmm. So, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there's a certain amount of discretion that you've got right. in the latter that you don't have in the former. Right. What were we going to say, Jessica? So, is it clear now, Gene, if you scroll to 131? The CPDC through regulation, regulation and authorize the town plan to grant <coughs> administrative approval. But where in that does an applicant know that they may have to go to CPDC? They That's may have, have to start. Okay. The word may is the. <coughs> Mm 
Because then we go into the procedures and it says the applicant shall submit to the CPDC through mm -hmm. the town planner's office. Mm -hmm. So I'm just concerned. And if the might CPDC be has issued regulations that say, here's what we think you as the town planner should be able to grant. Re review and approve. Yeah. 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 Review and approve, right. Um, then it's going to be set forth in the regulation that you have to report and you go ahead and do it. The commission doesn't have to get involved. Yeah, basically we need we need something resembling the application package to come to you first. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's basically if you've issued regulations that set forth what the criteria are where you would like the town planner to review and approve, yeah. as soon as she gets the packet, she's going to review it, compare it to the regulations and see whether it's something that stays with her or goes to you guys. Well, elsewhere we say that it's either going to come to CPDC or go through administrative review. So if we just took out... Yeah, that's where I'm kind of... If we just took out to the CPDC and that the applicant shall submit through the town planner's office. Right. Except you guys are the commission. Mm. I think that needs to stay. Mm, I think so too. You're ultimately the deciding authority. Yeah. Yep. Basically, the, ap the application needs to be addressed to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So are we saying that they're going to submit this application and then town planner makes a determination based on the regulations? Yep. Right. So then, I feel like we maybe should say that somewhere. Well. Or are they going to have to flip to the regulations? Is your concern that the sequence of events here is not is out of order? I guess my concern is that sometimes people, when we explain minor site plan review, they say, oh, well, is that a meeting with the board? They kind of want to know if that's a meeting or if it's administrative approval, because that can affect their timeline. Well, and the answer is you don't know yet. Right. But I just regulations don't know. are going to be public records. Yeah. yeah. So they can assess that themselves. So then I don't think we would want them to submit the envelopes quite yet because if it's minor site plan reviewed through town planner, we don't require notification to a butter. So that could be a lot of postage that they have to submit for determination of site plan. That's I don't think that's required. So if we're looking for a determination yeah. of site plan review first, we should kind of say that. Yeah. Well, does minor site plan review always in require a butter notification? Through CPDC, if it, it comes does. to you guys, it, we we do that. Well, I understand that if it comes to us, it, it requires it, but does it always require it? No, if it's just administrative, we don't do. Just move the parent <laughs> move that that's fine yeah I just wanted it to be clear why can't we just say we are required or tell them where it's required on that paragraph where the applicant shall submit shall also submit stamped addresses for a better notification qualify that paragraph by saying you know for CPDC or for, for minor site plan review before CPDC, the applicant shall also submit. Right. Yeah. That would make sense. Mm -hmm. So we're calling this 1.3.2 yeah. minor site plan review by CPDC? No, just go down to the next paragraph. Right before the word and put right before the applicant. Yeah. Mm. Right up there. No. No, right where you were before. Yeah. So at the, and you want to strike the capital T. Lower, lower, lower. Next paragraph. Next, Next paragraph. paragraph. <laughs> 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 Down here. That one. Oh, there okay. you go. Never mind. Sorry, Dean. Okay. So for for minor site plan review by CPDC, yeah. the applicant shall.
Good. Okay. Yes. I have one other question. Something to another yeah. comment. Um, the exterior alteration, 500 square feet or more, um, to me, that's always confused me a little bit um, because everything else we generally, I, I, uh, 500 square feet of what? Of siding? Of the side of a building? I mean, that's how it's been interpreted. That's a little bit odd. I mean, I, because you, usually in other things you're talking about um, square feet of building, meaning footprint. Footprint, yeah. And in here we happen to be talking about square feet of the side of a building. Um, and I don't know how are we? better to. Well, we, yeah, we are, or it's been interpreted that way. I, I know it's been interpreted that way. But I'm not sure that if that, that's the threshold that we're... It's a little bit of both. If you're doing a ramp, that's going to be horizontal. If you're doing storefront, that's vertical. It says limited to doors, paint, awnings, railings. Well, that's the well, that's no, that's exclusion. The that's the exception. Yeah. It's the, it's the, that's the minor Major exterior the alteration greater than 500 square feet. I What's that mean? Gives us more more control, more flexibility. If you I, I guess I, I, the only reason I bring it up is because I have the question of, do they really mean that if I, um, if I, you know, reside the building, then I, it's more than 500 square feet, then I need to come in for a site plan review. Well, yeah. downtown guy on Haven Street, remember? Yeah. Uh, that building came yeah. in. And Harrow's. And he only did the front yep. entrance. Then he said, oh, I'm going to do this, the hardy plank mm. on the rest of the building. We said, oh, you've got to come back. And he was like, what? Tim. But the, the, the question, what is our actual threshold? I mean, is it exterior alteration of a building whose footprint is 500 square feet or more? I mean, is, is that, or is it, <laughs> you know, I've never quite understood where this the 500 number applies. We the way we do it is we measure what's being altered. If it's siding, if it's an addition, if it's the work that's being reviewed would be 500 square feet or more. Do you want to add horizontally or vertically? Well, the your earlier point. language, any exterior construction alteration or expansion of more than 500 feet, is a little bit more detailed. Yeah, but it's still a, a question of okay. what does it mean? I mean, Well, I mean, I think what you need to decide is do you want to regulate changing to the siding? If you do, then, you know, I think the way you have it, it, it covers everything. More typically, I see site plan review getting triggered when you're increasing the footprint of the building. And, and boards tend not to worry about changing siding yeah, that can have a worse impact than anything. Other people just yeah, I mean, that, that's a policy decision is yeah. that how much you want to have come before you. Well, again, we were able to let the town planner look at that. Except that for major, quote unquote, major exterior greater than 500 feet, that comes to you, to the table. Well, it, it major, which is not doors paint right clothing. aside from that exclusion uh, I I guess I brought it up because I don't have a problem with the 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 threshold but it just is unclear to me that if we're really talking about siding it it doesn't I don't it doesn't read that way to me and so it probably doesn't read that way to other people as well it's mm -hmm. not clear are we talking 500 square foot footprint, or are you talking about 500 square feet of the size of the building? Well, before it. I think we okay. do we not have We've always room? interpreted it as this. Before, but I think we had some language that routine maintenance and replacement yes. in kind was exempt. So if they're replacing 500 square feet of siding with 
exciting, we wouldn't require it. Or 500 square feet of windows if they're just replacing the windows. Um, but I don't see that in here. Did we want to maybe add that back in? Routine maintenance or replacement in kind is exempt. It's a current term under the applicability. Yeah. Do we have that in there? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, you should have that. Yeah. So, maybe right under the applicability? Yeah. I mean, yeah. What if exterior mm -hmm. alterations, 500 square feet or more of horizontal or vertical modifications? I like that. that. Vague enough where. What? Big enough where we can look at it and decide yeah. the impact is great or not. And move it along. It's like like two that, family that. structures are exempt from site plan review. And maybe in kind. And routine maintenance and replacement in kind. Uh, in because kind. Because I assume in the kind. interior alteration of 2000. Um, square feet is actually footprint is squ is floor area right I'm not increased that recently <laughs> not four walls Two. Yeah. yeah it used to be a thousand right we right. increased that and so that's why I think that needs vertical horizontal or vertical needs to be added in there so do you want to say exterior alteration uh, 500 square feet or more of horizontal or vertical modifications. Vertical alter modifications. Modifications. Or used alterations. You can look at it if you want. So we're talking out or up, right? Yeah. Right. Same way that it's been def been interpreted before. Mm -hmm. and then the first sentence it should be routine maintenance or replacement in kind. that you know we're still gonna have town council to get there really yeah. yeah but I think it, that's it's substantial improvement yep. so who wants to take a stab at developing the rules and regulations that we're gonna need to adopt right away <laughs> not tonight <laughs> I'm looking at you Dave think you good any other comments Dave but I think we have rules and regulations that will get us through for now anyways the problem is we took out all of the application. The full site plan. Yeah. That's fine. <coughs> we just don't want to forget to do that because otherwise <laughs> <laughs> we have a big hole. Yeah, no problem. Sure, sure. All right. All right. We're good on this. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Now we can post this to the website and. Yep. Ask town council to. Town council review it. And Excellent. All right, next on the agenda. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Right. You want to take a break? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Five minutes? Yep. Sure. Yep. Okay. Ah. Uh, What's there, gentlemen? Set a new record for public hearings per hour. I know. <laughs> <laughs>
very pleased with the shelf like that. Just the uh, updates in minutes. Yeah. Yeah, we're almost done. Um, I mean, it sounds like for two weeks from now, the pre is that the presentation, the same thing that you did tonight? Pretty much. We'll tweak it up a little. Okay. Section 3 got a little funky with the yeah. what's in and what's right, out. Right, right. So we'll fix that. But, um, yeah. but for the November stuff, we'll have to think about presentation and handouts. Yeah. I mean, I you may not know how much time you have at this point. Yeah. The presentation, but I guess as soon as we find out, then you know, I can come here and sort of strategize about um, the best way to try to pull that together. Yep. But I think it'll have to be a combination of stuff that you present on the screen and then some handouts that may have more details so that people can get their questions. Yep. Or hopefully we'll have their questions answered before they get that answer. Yeah, Marcy's going to send a letter out, I think we said October 6th, so after the September town meeting, with a um, translation document of what the changes are for November. Okay. And her letter's going to say, CPDCs has a public hearing October 20th, and some other things. So that'll go to all the town meeting members. And we're going to ask them in September with the turning point technology, you know, were you aware of the zoning uh, update project, you know, public meeting, this whole thing? <laughs> if you were aware, did you attend? Did you not attend? Did you not care? Have you been to the website? You know, that type of thing. So do you have a stuff in hand? We do. Great. Yeah. Yep, we do some dry runs. And yeah, that's, that's the key to practice. Sometimes I wind up just, if I do that, I just sort of shut everything down and start again. Yep. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ralph. Ralph. Thanks, Ralph. Ralph. All right. Home stretch. Yeah. Any updates? Um, did you want to yes. take a vote on recommending the larger some update project for the inclusion on the warrant? November. Absolutely. Get it on there. Not, if That's we have not already done that. Have no, we've done September, so we'll need to do recommend 
CPTs you'll need to recommend. Board of Selectmen put an article. Do we um, have the, we, we normally we have the article or, or draft wordage. Do we need? I think we can be pretty general. Mm. Really, it's going to be the one article. Mm -hmm. We're going to update the entire zoning bylaw. They're closing the warrant uh, September 23rd. Ah. So we won't, because this, we get followed up with this town meeting on September 29th. That would be our meeting. Well, that, oh. actually, that wouldn't have. It, it, the warrant closes on September 23rd. That's why I think it's important to act on it tonight. Move that the CPDC um, recommend uh, a zoning article for the November town meeting to replace the town of Reading zoning bylaw in its entirety with the uh, draft proposed, jointly proposed by CPDC and the ZAC. So done. Got it. <laughs> We have a second. Do we need to minus what gets approved by September town meeting? No. No. Because the new Everything will move into the new outlet. It'll all no. move in yeah. anyway. Right. Okay. I would say. I'll second that. All those in favor? It's in limbo. <laughs> <laughs> the Twilight Zone okay, is it? Purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> That's complete. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> well. Oh, okay. Oh. Great. <laughs> <laughs> In the no, minutes. we're good. Okay. Good. Uh, any updates? Um, perfectos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm scared with what you're gonna say. Um, they are uh, working on the rebar on the foundation, and they're gonna be pouring the slab. Uh, this week and they hope to have their building permit materials I think actually I think they do have everything in they yeah they have I believe everything and they're gonna need one structural report that's right after the pouring that's of the right. slab and and then I they'll get their building permit and they'll start construction using the plans that were approved they have not made any changes since they've been here last. That's what's attached to the building permit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said they had to be quick. But <laughs> they were decisive, I guess. So good. that's good news. Assuming everything goes the yeah. right way. Mm -hmm. Right. There was some scuttlebutt around that Bunratties was hiring. I heard the same thing, yeah. yeah they're all over. So I don't Craigslist? Does that make sense? Yeah. Can you yeah. hire off of Craigslist? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook? Yeah. yeah. Cool. And uh, the Hitching Post is open in their new location at Two Haven, mm -hmm. where the old Sense of Wonder is. So that's great. Great yeah. to have her yeah. back. That sign looks good. Yeah. Came mm -hmm. out really yeah, it nice. Does look good. The space looks great inside. And um, we did a ribbon cutting for that and for um, Fitness Within, the one over by Mission of Deeds. Yep. Mm -hmm. Used to be the bath yep. and whatever shop, so they're open. I think that's pretty much it. We have a couple plans going on. The economic development plan, you guys saw my email earlier this week. I'm assuming it's probably a challenging time for, for most of you to join. Um, but we'll be moving forward with that. We'll have a couple other um, evening forums as part of that process. So we'll, mm -hmm. you know, be able to keep you updated on that. It's based on the priority development um, 
Dave, you kind of were, went to a few right, meetings with them. You can see the priority right. development areas. So it's really taking a more in-depth look at, at those areas. And um, they have a new newer technology where they're actually going to get on a square footage level analysis as to how much commercial space could go in there as in oh, residential really? units per acre per the site. So mm -hmm. um, they're going to be getting into that level of detail with the plan. Mm -hmm. And you saw the complete streets now got funded. So all the work that was done on complete streets were queued up for funding. And the, um, we had the, the South Main Street um, lean, lean. Oh, the roadway diet? Roadway diet, that was the word. The, uh, is that going forward? Um, we're waiting on MassDOT. They were looking at driveways. Okay. So they want to make sure they understand how involved that would be. Obviously, mm -hmm. the more driveways, the more difficult it's going to be to do something like that. I'm so not entirely sure why, but that's okay. The amount of turning. All those turning movements. Well, it's a matter, but I mean, basically, you just <laughs> you 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 uh, rearrange the road. <laughs> it's Analyzing the, it is. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, doing it isn't hard. It's right. the fact that if you've got a lot of right-hand turns, then it slows, right, you have to slow down to take the right-hand turn, so that decreases the volume of the roadway because you're down to a one-lane roadway. So it gets rid of all the left-hand turns, which is good because those take a longer time to turn, right. but if you have a lot, still, if you have a lot of right-hand turns, the, the speed of the road may decrease Maybe to a point where they're not okay. comfortable with it. Mm. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Yep. So. More analysis involved, right? Yeah. And at the financial forum last Wednesday night, um, Senator Jason Lewis was talking about some of the newer changes to the Community Preservation Act, including the fact that you can now use the money to renovate existing parks and recreation areas. You used to have to be able to use it for creating new open park, you know, recreation areas. That's a pretty big change. Um, and so when they did their manual polling with dots next to which ideas they thought were a good one, people really liked the idea of the Community Preservation Act, at least the people that were at the, the financial forum, mm. which was very surprising because any time that comes up, there tends to be a lukewarm response at best. Well, <coughs> yeah, I mean, historically, it, the, and I'm guessing just from, from uh, memory, that the issues that, that have come up before is it looked like, you know, increasing your taxes and at the same time increasing the development, or, you know, increasing taxes to support increased, increased development. And the town has generally been reluctant. CPA? Yeah. I Preservation. It was the opposite of that. I mean, I thought it was, it was I've seen as a new tax, of course, but um, as a way of buying up properties that you then left as open space or recreational areas to prevent development. I'm not saying that the, the, the reaction was rational. I'm just saying. <laughs> Yes. You know, that I guess it makes it so that you can use that money for an existing resource. The problem is you don't then create new open spaces that can't be developed. And I know that, you know, opponents of 40B, for example, say if you can buy up as much of the land as you want, you control that, you can't get a 40B on it. That was one of the better points of that. If you just start spending it on your existing parks, the rest of no, the I think you can use it on both. No, I understand, but if, yeah. if, if the money is then focused and funneled over to existing resources, oh. you're just not developing these new resources. You're really not preserving. You're not creating more open space. Yeah. You're mm. just overdeveloping. Yeah. Creating a different way to tax. Yeah. That is earmarked to the town's parks. It's one way that it would mm. be viewed. Mm. Well, I mean, arguably, it's the, as you say, it, it's a way to fund the 
increase the, the revenue without increasing the utilization. So people are paying so that other people can't or don't have to, you know, build bigger and, and cover up all the open space in order to increase the tax base. Yeah, I'm trying to think of which of the, the Concords and Lexingtons, which ones of those have a pretty good CPA fund. They do that, right? Concord they, has a yeah. very good they CPA fund. They buy up a fund. lot of land and control it. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Newton does too. They, they give, well, this is going back a few years, but they were giving um, first-time home buyers up to $95,000 for down payments to get into a house. Mm -hmm. Wow. They said, that's what we're doing. We're getting people into housing, and first-time home buyers, we're helping them. They meet the criteria. With CPA money? Yep. Really? And that prevented people to buy an existing house? Yeah. So preventing new development. Is that the point there? Well, just underwriting home ownership for first-time home buyers. Okay, I'm just trying cool. to understand how that lines up with the goals of what I guess I understood CPA to mean to be. How, affordable housing, open space, affordable housing, historic well, preservation. I, I, I guess it's you know housing as opposed to commercial development, or, or I mean guessing. Tear downs. Yeah. But anyway, that was kind of surprising. Probably looking at an override in the next couple of years. So, so operating we, override. Mm -hmm. Have we heard um, anything interesting from our neighboring towns? The, I mean, uh, the, I know that there's been a, a variety of development battles going on in, in Woburn or such and such. One of the farm. Oh yeah. Things and there's the um, the other side of Johnson Woods, I and mean, I don't know what's. I haven't heard much no. about that. The uh, yeah. plan that you endorsed uh, was also endorsed. You're talking the right. Yeah, that was endorsed by all the other communities as well okay. on the same plan. But we haven't heard anything about the particulars no. of the development yet. I'm sure George will find out soon enough. Oh, I guess it was Stoneham. Was it has one Weiss of the Farm. Weiss yeah, Farm. The, the the Weiss Farm down by the high school. Uh, a number of years back, there was um, a push by the um, MWRA to install a new water tower up on top of I think Bear Hill. Were you around then? Mm -hmm. And you know, you have you ever heard? I don't know what that was specifically tied to I thought it was tied to um, our entry into MWRA but also I think Stoneham was trying to get in or one of the other towns around here is that ever if you ever heard I, heard I don't know if it just was working on the slow MWRA pace of development <laughs> or whether the, the two tanks they want to put at, at, the, at, the at the South Main Street which yeah the Cloverleaf um, well, one concept was at the top of Bear Hill, and then there's one, yeah, like at the Route 28 Cloverleaf. Right. Well, right, that's, that's, that's part know, of the, six years uh, uh, I've forgotten what their particular phrase was. Was the That's for redundancy. The redundancy, for redundancy, yeah. redundancy. But well, they, the loop that they're running out to, or that they prepared to run out to, or did run out to, summer, right? I mean, uh, West was supposed to take care of that. All that work they were doing on Main Street yeah. Uh, yeah. last year. Mm. That's the redundant line. The redundant, well, the redundant line is the one that runs up uh, Route 28 right by the, the Stoneham line. But they were also, they are talking about the 195 foot or whatever it was, standpipes um, in the cloverleaf on the Stoneham side of the uh, interchange um, because it, it was a pressure management 
for the North Suburban something or other. I mean, there was a... Yeah, but I, I wrote a letter to the Board of Selectmen about that and showed them what they're doing elsewhere to take care of those issues. They do... They've got pump stations. They can pump. They don't have to build these giant towers. I, I guess my point of bringing it up was it, I know MWRA takes a long time to do stuff, and I was wondering if it was just in hiatus or whether they actually it, anyone heard that they did something, and it sounds like yeah. there was. I'll check. This. I thought that they had taken care of it by running the lines, running the, uh, the pipelines. Well, I, I, the, um, I don't think the, the redundant connection, I don't think, has been completed yet. because There's a 4 million gallon subterranean tank going in across from Spot Pond, where the hospital was. Right. You've seen oh, that yeah, hole. Really. There's a huge tank underneath there. And that's probably the, the yeah. reservoir that they need. There's two 2 million gallon tanks. Hmm. Well, no, I'm not sure that they're looking... One uh, million gallon. One of those. They weren't necessarily looking for the, the reservoir. They were looking for the, the height. No, they can pump it. They put inline turbines in yeah. their lines now, and they can yeah. reduce the head to take care of all these other things and generate the electricity to run the pumps. So it's, there's ways <laughs> to do it without building these giant tanks. Fine by me. <laughs> Fine by most. Anything else? Take out some minutes <coughs> and go out. First thing I saw was my last name was Paul. Okay. So these were, um, Kim took these, so I'll just Oh, okay. for her. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Pick yes. Pick 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 <laughs> no problem. we just change the 4K square feet to 4,000? Yes. is missing um, the the line that starts Mr. Oh. LaGrega <coughs> mm, the first underneath the first motion Mr. LaGrega talked with the, with the commission about the difficulties of finding a good tenant so there's an of missing there too. I don't understand that last sentence. And we'll be back with the new tenant. Um, so they are going to go through CPDC again once they identify a tenant. So I can modify that to, s to say, say that. that. Oh. Yep. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you. Ms. Young Tafoya raised her concern that, that what is being proposed is not user friendly and is going. I think is sounding. More legalese. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. Sounding. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense.
Yeah, <clears throat> two paragraphs down, I think pylon is not... It's either not capitalized or uh, freestanding. Um, where is that, Dave? I'm sorry. The commission discussed increasing the amount of signage, blah, blah, blah. Mr. DeRezzo asked how far they are willing to go with the pylon sign. It's gotcha. either lowercase or a different word. And the in the planning updates, I think we need more than just WSHDC. Yep, you can spell that out. <coughs> town is reviewing the cultural grant or were we applying for one? Um, well, we've received one. Implementing the and cultural grant. And we're implementing. Grant. Okay. Is it actually called a cultural grant or is it called a cultural zone or? or it's an MDI, Mass Downtown Initiative. Very implementing a cultural grant that will investigate the viability of a downtown cultural district. Cultural district grant. That's what yep. I thought. Is it a cultural district grant? It's a cultural mass grant. downtown initiative grant to look at uh, creating a cultural district. Yeah, I just think it needs <laughs> it needs more than just cultural yeah, I'll grant. Yeah, uh, I'll speak to that up. Tell anybody really what it is. <clears throat> then the next bullet might have to back for quotes because we're more missing it. Might have to go back out. Oh, okay. Go back out. Yeah. Right. Move that CDC approve the minutes for the meeting of August twenty fifth, two thousand fourteen, as amended. Second. That was in favor. One more. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Keep it even. <laughs> Can I second it? It sounds like you're saying second when you ask second. Second? Yeah. Is there a second? It's a couple of words you just <laughs> they go unspoken. You can certainly second. Just, just like might yeah. have to, might have to back. <laughs> back for quotes. <laughs> All right. Indeed. <clears throat> 